Hello, and welcome back to the Fit You Podcast. My name is Dakota Phillips. I'm the owner of Fit You Coaching. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, if you learn something here today, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined again with my wife, Savannah. She's going to maybe be a more permanent fixture to the podcast. Um, she's, at least today in the next few podcasts, going to kind of take on the role of the listener maybe you have questions savannah will be the one to ask those questions help keep me on track you make it sound like i'm here on a trial basis like we'll see how this goes for you well like i said it's it's too late to turn back now we've spent money on an extra set of microphone (laughs) headphones arm for the microphone so you're here to stay and hopefully we'll just keep getting better maybe we'll upgrade from the lighting and We've upgraded the camera, so we've gotten from the GoPro to a fancy camera, and everybody can see your beauty a little bit more now. Oh, shucks. If you're on the YouTube, if you're on, like, Apple Podcast or something like that, you'll just have to take my word for it. She's a smoke show. <laughs> oh, my gosh. God. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about uh, bigger versus stronger. So uh, we were having an interesting conversation with one of my sisters last weekend, Um, She was talking about some of her fitness goals, and we got on the subject of um, focusing your attention towards getting bigger, like looking stronger, kind of looking like a bodybuilder, getting ready for the beach, and then the opposite side of getting stronger, so maybe being able to back squat 500 pounds, something like that, and how those two are not always the same goal, and kind of the different workouts that you would need to do to achieve those two separate goals um so yeah we're going to cover kind of the science behind that and i'll kind of break it down into a more understandable science not like a college lecture Um, and then we're going to talk about why you would choose choose either one of those like your specific goals that would fit that workout category and then we'll talk about kind of that mindset that you would need to apply to those workouts and maybe what you would be thinking as you go into the gym Um, So getting into kind of the science behind it, Um, bigger, when I think of bigger, we think of like the Arnold Schwarzeneggers, pro bodybuilders, um, somebody that just like wants to look good when they go to the beach, somebody that looks really fit, really strong. Um, And that doesn't always necessarily mean that you are the strongest person, because then if you take the other side of the stronger side, um, you would think of somebody that could like deadlift a thousand pounds or back squat 500 they're not going to look like arnold schwarzenegger with the really defined muscles um they may be like look a little bit more average but they're just really strong so so um, that kind of explains why like some people look really jacked and then there can be another guy that's like deceptively just as strong exactly and sometimes even like deceptively stronger um because getting into kind of like why that you're kind of doing more strength based. So maybe your workouts are looking more like five by fives, maybe working up to more of like, um, heavier, uh, exercises, but you're doing a lot more rest in between. Um, whereas if you're wanting to look really strong, uh, with those really defined muscles, you're probably going to be using lighter weights and doing a lot more reps with a little bit more, a little bit less, uh, rest time. So, You've got, if you wanted to be on the looking really jacked side, you'd be focusing more on uh, what's called hypertrophy training. But then if you're focusing more on the strength side, you'd just be doing like classic strength um, workouts. So the people who are trying to get stronger are typically the people at the gym that you see with the bigger weights, doing a few sets, typically sitting on their phone resting a lot more in between and then people who are going to be getting bigger muscles are going to be the people who are like sweating a whole bunch might not have the bigger weights but then you just see them like constantly going back and another set another set another set of a lot of reps right um and so with that strength side um like you said they're going to be maybe they're going to do just five reps of a back squat Then they're going to find a box, sit down, maybe rest for maybe even five minutes, chit chat with their friends, and then go back, do another five, probably going to be a lot um, heavier, 
you're not able to do those super heavy weights for like 30 reps because that's you're picking something that's kind of on the higher percentage side of what you're able to lift. So that's why you're going to need to rest more because you're lifting at the higher percentage that you're able to. So you have to rest more, recover, and then go back into it. Um, and that's going to get you stronger. But then, like you said, the people that are like going back, maybe they're doing a superset. So they're doing curls and then they're doing something like pull-ups or something else that's like a similar movement where they're resting, but they're still doing something else, um, keeping those active muscles resting a lot less. To do that, you're going to have to use a lighter weight because if you're using something that's a higher percentage of what you can lift, you're going to get super tired. You're not going to be able to maintain a higher rep count. So like doing 20 or 30 reps, um, you're just not going to be able to do, I mean, probably not going to be able to do 500 pounds 30 times possible, but not for most of us. Okay. Yeah. So this like brings me back to college days when I was lifting a lot more and I did not understand any of this. And I just felt very anxious sitting around in the gym and like people were going to like look at me and think that I was just there for no reason. Um, and so I was constantly just trying to go fast. And so I was, I think I probably could have done a lot more weight if I had given myself rest time and maybe I would have gotten stronger and a little less bulky in college. Yeah. And so that's kind of where the each individual, each individual's goals are going to come into play. Um, for you as a volleyball player, um, doing a mixture is a good thing because you want to be stronger uh, because you need to be able to um, jump higher and things like that. But you also want to keep moving because your volleyball matches, you don't have the time to sit down for five minutes in between every um, yeah, volley, thing like that. It did like work to my advantage that I had mm -hmm. pretty decent endurance by the end of it all. Right. And then so maybe if because I know your coaches were just trying to like get the team to do something where if they knew you were going to be following their workouts to a T, um, maybe you would have benefited from more strength based on the beginning of the off season and then work your way into doing more reps um, and getting more prepared for the volleyball endurance that you would need. Um, and that's kind of where, so depending on what your goals out there are, the listener, um, if your goal is, like I said, to want to deadlift as heavy as possible, you're probably not going to be doing a ton of reps. You're probably going to be doing a lot more resting, but a lot heavier reps. Um, if you're someone that wants to go into bodybuilding or physique, you're probably going to be doing a lot higher reps with a lot less rest. Um, and then that'll kind of depend too on like if you're an athlete, maybe you want to do something more like Savannah where there's a little bit of a mixture. Maybe you want to be stronger in some areas, but you also need the endurance to be able to play a full game. Um, and then also just for kind of the general person who's just trying to be an active fit individual, finding somewhere in between is also a good way to go about it too, because for the general population, there's no reason to squat 500 pounds other than to say that you can do it because there's no health advantage to that. I mean, there's one of the things that's going to predict how long you live is how strong your legs are, but only to a certain point. Like you really just need to be able to stand up off the toilet and move about doing the things that you want to do. Very rarely is that going to ever include squatting 500 pounds. So and I know that like we've discussed for me, like as I start to get older, typically it's women around age 30, like you start losing muscle mass if you're not working to keep it. Uh, and that's why you brought up the like why the typical set rep that everybody goes to is three sets of 10 because that's like you're in the middle. That's like you're not going crazy on strength and you're not going crazy on growth. You're like safe in the middle. Right. And like with everything, it's going to depend on how intense you're going. Um, even if you and I went to the gym and we were going to do like four sets of 30 with a little bit of rest, we're not going to end up looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger from doing that kind of workout. Um, and similarly, we're probably not going to reach crazy high numbers on bench press if we go in there and doing strength training. Um, it's going to take a little bit more than that. We'd have to go a lot more in depth, um, but that's just kind of the general direction that you'd be going. So for the typical person, 
doing that three sets of 10 is usually a pretty good way to just be generally fit because it's going to get you moving with those um, exercises with enough reps to keep you looking fit. And then you're also going to be able to use a slightly higher weight than if you were trying to do like 30 to 50 reps um, so that you're still getting a little bit stronger as well. And you're never going to get fully to one side. You have to think about it as a scale. Um, just because you're trying to look really jacked doesn't mean you're going to look really jacked and not be strong. You're still going to have that muscle that will make you stronger than maybe the average person, but you just might not be as strong as somebody who's only focusing on strength. But same thing, if you can bench press 500 pounds, you're going to look stronger than the average person. So it's a scale. You're not going to go a hundred percent one way. You're still going to have You're not sacrificing one over the other. Exactly. Yeah. If you really want to bench press 500 pounds, you're still probably going to look pretty jacked. (laughs) Okay. So I got really excited about talking about like the mindset portion of all of this because like I said, I didn't know about a lot of this when I was in the gym and I feel like I would have gone a lot easier on myself if I understood this stuff. Right. And that's kind of the thing is if you have a goal in mind, you can plan your workouts to fit that goal. And then with this information, if you have this information, you kind of know I'm going to the gym to do this workout. I want to be stronger. That's going to require me to rest more so that I can keep performing the workout that I'm supposed to, to get to the goals that I want to be at. Um, Where if you're just kind of going to the gym like you have kind of a goal but you don't understand exactly what you're doing that can be difficult like you said with the mindset piece because you feel like oh I'm trying to get really strong but I'm just sitting around because I can't pick that weight up again maybe I need to do less but then that's going to make it take longer for you to get to the goal that you're trying to achieve Um, and vice versa if you think you're trying to look super good for the beach and you're doing really heavy weights that you're only able to do a few times like I said you're going to look a little bit stronger, but you won't get those, you won't reach that goal as quickly, um, knowing what you know, hopefully now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like going into the gym, I mean, for the longest time, my access was to the YMCA and there were not a lot of women on that side of the YMCA. They divided up the cardio and the strength into two different rooms. And so I was often the only woman in there and that's really intimidating, especially when I'm walking in there with like, I mean, at least I had a paper program of like the exercises I was supposed to go do, but like, I didn't have a ton of guidance on weight. Um, and sometimes there was guidance on sets and reps. So I was constantly looking around and just kind of like panicking and it took away from the experience to be like, Oh my gosh, I'm grabbing this really small weight. And like these guys over here doing like so much more and like, I'm really struggling to like keep up with this and like they never seem to fail, but I keep failing. But like I'm realizing now looking back, it's because I wasn't giving myself any rest time. So like I was struggling to finish lots of sets. And so like I think looking back, I wish I knew this stuff so I could have been way more kind to myself in those moments and realized that like I was pushing myself really hard and like it's okay to give yourself rest time or like realizing that if I give myself more rest time, like I can use the bigger weights. Like they're not as intimidating when you give yourself proper rest. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it's super important that when you're going to the gym, remember to kind of stay in your lane. Remember that your goals are yours. Um, you're not necessarily trying to be that other person in the gym. You want to be the best version of you. You need to do your workouts where you're at. Um, cause yeah, once you start looking around the gym, then that can definitely start getting in your head because that person over there is doing that kind of workout and you don't know what their goals are. Maybe they have different goals than you. Um, I know for sure that there wasn't too many other people in that gym trying to play college volleyball. Um, so it's important to remember that your goals are different. You got to do what is working for you. And that may mean something different than what you're seeing other people do. So yeah, very important to, I don't know, know what you need to know and remember that you're focused on your goals and yourself. Definitely. I uh, also want to talk though about what it means to set up your mindset for these kinds of things when you're not going into a gym, because like 
you have clients that don't go into a gym like the YMCA or Anytime Fitness or Planet Fitness or anything like that, like they work out from home. A lot of your programs are able to be done from home. So if they have specific goals in mind, it's still the same thing. Like even if you're not looking around, like I definitely for a long time felt like workouts had to be like you constantly had to be doing something. So it's like even when you're at home giving yourself that rest time and that kindness to like understand your goals and like what what about when you do have a program like I had like a paper program that I was supposed to follow um and like how would you uh, tell somebody to like add this into a program that they might already have or want to do or if they do group training or if they go to classes where they get to pick out their weights and work along with others, how would you go about telling them to incorporate this kind of knowledge? Yeah. So it works pretty similar to kind of like what we've been talking about. Um, but like, we'll take like a boot camp class, for example, or, um, maybe like a, yeah, we'll just start with the boot camp example first. So, um, you've got a group of people, uh, maybe the workout says you're going to do, um, shoulder press for 30 seconds and then rest and do that for however many rounds. Um, So you're going over to choose your weights, probably your dumbbells, um, and people are going to grab what they want to grab. But let's say that your goal is to get ready for summer. You've got a a beach vacation coming up. You want to start looking like you work out. So you're probably going to grab something a little bit on the lighter side and expect to do a lot more reps in that 30 second time or whatever the uh, workout calls for. Um, But then maybe your goal is to get really strong with that exercise. So maybe you're going to go on the heavier side and that's where kind of that mindset of my goal here is to get stronger. So I need to use a heavier weight with less reps. So maybe if you were planning on getting to look really strong, you're going to try to get 30 shoulder presses in 30 seconds. That's moving really quick, probably going to be hard to do, but it's something that's going to keep you from resting. Whereas if you're trying to get really strong, maybe you're only going to try to do five really good um, strict shoulder presses. It's a lot less, but you're using a heavier weight and you're going to have to um, kind of pace yourself with that and probably rest a little bit more. So just where the other classmates might be using lighter reps or lighter weights to do more reps, you still have to remember my goal here is to get stronger. I'm going to use a heavier weight. I'm going to do less reps. And then if you're doing this at home, um, good example, like with my workouts that I post uh, for our group coaching, um, I'll maybe say if your goal here is to get stronger, try to do the exercise, like if it's push-ups, do the more challenging version of it. Even if it's less reps, try to do your push-ups on your toes, maybe three or five reps if that's a challenge for you. And then if your goal is to, you know, get ready for the beach, Maybe you're going to do something where you're doing knee push-ups or your push-ups on a box uh, where your hands are elevated a little bit more to make those easier so that you're able to do those more with less reps. Yeah. Okay. I also want to point out that like both of these kinds of workouts are completely valid and are like morally neutral. Like if you want to look good, go look good. Mm -hmm. Like that's do whatever motivates you. Like if that's where it's going to bring you joy and like get you excited to go work out is like, Oh my gosh, I got a cruise coming in a few months and I'm going to look so good for it. Like, yeah, that's amazing. And if you're like, I really want to be able to uh, lift my cousins up and put them on my shoulders. Like, yeah, that's also a really cool, valid goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could totally change too. Um, I, even for myself, like I rarely ever go a whole year doing the same thing um, because I'll maybe hurt my back and then um, I want to get better at the deadlift because I don't want to hurt my back anymore. So now I'm going to focus more on strength with that. And then I maybe either like I get to a point where it's like, all right, I just did 300 pounds five by five. I don't necessarily need to go much heavier than that. So now I want to focus on something else and you can kind of change back and forth. Um, Just know that if you're doing that, you're probably not going to ever reach that like Arnold physique or the 500 pound back squat. You're going to have to focus a little bit more on it. But 
like I said, if you're not trying to be Arnold or you're not trying to get a 500 pound back squat, but you're just trying to be generally fit and healthy, then you can kind of switch between those. Um, and even throughout your week too, you can have this week is going to be a strength week. Next week is going to be a hypertrophy look really strong week. And you can mix those workouts together. I think that just makes working out more fun too, to understand. And you're not just going in and like grabbing weights and being like, okay, I'm going to do three sets of 10 because that's all I really know how to do when I go into the gym, like being able to go in there with a goal and knowing like I'm going to do less weight and more reps, or I'm going to do more weight and less reps. And like, it's going to get me towards this. Like it just Mm -hmm. feels like more motivating to want to go in the gym when you truly understand what you could do for your body. Right. Exactly. And so I guess like a practical application to take away from this, if you wanted to go out and try a workout for both sides of this, if you want to try a get really strong workout, go out and do a five by five back squat kind of workout where you're going to do five reps, then rest five reps for five times. Um, so it's going to be a little bit heavier of a weight, obviously work your way up to that weight. Don't just slap your max on the bar and go in like that, work your way up, do a warm up, um, things like that. So you don't hurt yourself doing a heavier weight. Um, and then if you wanted to do like a getting ready for the beach hypertrophy type of workout, then I would say maybe do, um, I like to do uh, four set or yeah, four sets. So four rounds of 30 reps. So you're going to have to use a lighter weight because you have to be able to maintain that weight for 30 reps without resting. And then that rest time should be pretty short. So I try to keep it 30 seconds or less. Um, Kind of as you go through that workout, my rest time gets a little bit longer just because maybe I'm using a little bit too heavy a weight. But um, use something and you can always change the weight too. If you start out too heavy, use a lighter weight to keep yourself moving. That was going to be my question is like... If I'm supposed to get to 30 and I get to 25, the next time do I pick up a lighter weight? Definitely. Because especially since you're having a shorter rest time there, you're probably going to be even more tired starting that next one. And if you didn't make it to 30, it's going to be even harder to make it to 30 if you're using that same weight again. Um, So yeah. And listen to your body too. If you haven't done things like this before, you may need to kind of feel it out. Uh, If you're doing the strength one, maybe be like, oh, I did five, but that wasn't that hard. Maybe I should go a little bit heavier. Um, and then start your five once you feel like you've got something that's challenging enough. Same thing with the, like, if you want to do curls, like if you didn't quite make it to 30, maybe you only made it to 15. Maybe you don't want to count that. You just say that's warm up rep. And then you start your round the next time a little bit lighter, but then you make it to 30. And then if you're going through that workout on set four and you're like, I can barely pick my arms up. Maybe you need to pick up a lighter weight as you go through the workout. Cool. Well, I can't think of any other questions that I have related to this. It just, it makes me excited. It makes me happy to think about people going into the gym with like a better understanding. Cause like I said, I really wish that I had had that at that point in my life when I was in sports and I was in the gym for a purpose all the time. And like I was in there because I loved volleyball and it, I was still so scared to be in a weight room cause it was so intimidating and I just hope that information like this makes people more comfortable and more willing to like go in there and do what's good for them and find some, some joy in their workouts. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's, it's fun to know that there are different ways to work out. Um, cause like you said, maybe somebody's just going to the gym and they're doing a three sets of 10 because that's what they were shown. That's all they've ever known. Um, and this kind of gives them more options because it's not, uncommon for somebody to just get bored going to the gym. Um, but this kind of give you, gives you those options of now I'm going to focus on this or that, or I can change things up and keep my workouts fresh and interesting to keep me going back to the gym because consistency is going to be what gets you closer to your goals. And especially if your goal is just to be a general healthy, fit, happy person, um, getting to the gym more often than not is going to get you to that goal. So, and if you have any more questions, specific questions, um, you can always set up a coaching call with me. We can talk about it, talk about your goals and maybe what workout would be best for you, how I could help you get to those goals or where you could find somebody else even to get you to those goals. Um, so set up a coaching call with me. Uh, you go to www.fityoucoaching.com, go to the contact window, and then you can sign up for a coaching call and we can chat, have a zoom talk. Um, you could go on any of the social media links 
it's put out in a comment on any of the posts. I'll see it, respond to you. Uh, we can answer those questions. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you enjoyed the podcast, like, share, subscribe, do all those things. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your mom. And, and we'll see if I see you next week if I pass this trial run. Exactly. <laughs>